so Death Battle made a video on the Hulk versus Broly. Now, although this video is pretty good and uh, it was much better than some of their other videos uh, regarding the regarding some Dragon Ball characters, there are still a few issues that I have with uh, this video that they made. Not necessarily regarding the outcome itself, but more of the facts that they used. And they used a lot of like non-canon stuff that I want to go over. So uh, let's start with the what the facts that they used for Hulk. They had a lot of good ones, like the 150 billion ton mountain feet. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It was literally stated in the comic itself. Shattering an asteroid twice the size of Earth. Okay, that one's fine. When we start getting more into de in depth about these, is um is when I start having an issue. Like the Beyonder says that he has an infinity of power. Now, what was the real point of bringing up this feat? Because if you know anything about infinity, you know that some infinities are bigger than others. Uh, the best way for me to basically explain this is um, that there are an infinite amount of numbers in between one and two, but no matter how high that number is, it will never be three. Does, does that make sense? Like some, some infinities are, are bigger than other infinities. Same thing as between two and three, that infinity will always be bigger that that infinite amount of numbers in there will always be bigger than the amount of numbers between one and two in terms of uh, quantity, right? If you compare one number to the other, like 1.5 versus like 2.5, right? Obviously 2.5, any number between two and three is always gonna be higher between one and two. So that, that feat with the Beyonder is basically pointless because there are, we already know that there are other, cha other characters that can fight the Hulk on par. So saying that he has an infinity of strength is not really a very valid feat to bring up i mean obviously yeah it, it is something that's very impressive but like it's not like he can't be beaten that is I, I think that's the way that they try to portray uh this fact also this they mentioned the whole thing where uh they, they mentioned the whole the whole fact where i believe that thor can cross the universe in like five seconds and it was like 300 quadrillion times the speed of light and hulk fought thor so thus Hulk is as fast as Thor, but again, this brings back the whole thing uh, when we're talking about movement speed versus reaction speed. Just because Thor can move that fast, it doesn't mean that Hulk can move that fast because the reaction speed is in a fight, not their actual physical movement speed. So Hulk's movement speed would probably be much, much slower. But hey, maybe, maybe it's not. But they would need to include a feat such as Hulk jumping from Earth to the atmosphere in this amount of time, right? That would be a much more valid use of a speed feat. Whereas saying that he reacted to that. They also used one with uh, Silver Surfer, like he caught Silver Surfer mid-flight. And again, that's reaction speed, which is not movement speed, right? Usually, especially in, in anime, in manga, and comics those are those two are very very different things like for example some character might be able to react to bullets might be able to dodge bullets that doesn't mean they're necessarily as fast as a bullet when they're physically running but they might be able to dodge dodge them you, you see what i mean the reaction speed and and movement speed are very very different things right besides that most of the facts that they use for the hulk were more or less all right then we move on to Broly, which I, I have a little bit more stronger issues with the Broly side of the fight. Mainly because as soon as they bring up Broly, they say that they're going to use a bunch of different versions of Broly and, and take a bunch of uh, facts from those, such as like using Kefla and her reference to the transformation, using the Broly movies and like pr pretty much every Broly movie, including the last super one. And there's a lot of issues I have with this, primarily with the fact that the first Broly's movies, the first, I think it was two of them. We didn't mention Bio Broly because that's just a clone. But the first two Broly movies essentially were non-canon, so you can't use anything from those movies because they're completely non-canon. They don't count. They technically never happened. Uh, diff different universe does not apply. And then they're using feats from Super. Like that, you, you can't mix and match. You have to pick one version of the character that you're going to use. Um, because the, the feats don't exactly apply to, to the other character, right? They also said they were going to use feats from Kefla or Kale or whatever. Uh, I didn't, I don't remember them using any feats from Kale, but like also, uh, again, it is very similar to the one that Broly uses and we can assume that it's the same, but it's never really stated that they're in the same form. But okay, I'll give that one to them. That, that one's fine. It, the forms are close enough to the point where you could probably say they're the same form. Like also again with the, with the, with the non-canon speak, he said they said uh, that he, his eraser can can travel uh, thousands of miles in seconds and destroy a planet. Okay, they're obviously referring to the non-canon Broly, and uh, we can 
we can automatically th throw that fact away. Although we can still assume that he can do that, mainly because of power scaling, especially. Obviously, you know that, for example, Piccolo from the Saiyan Saga can throw a beam in just a couple of seconds that can reach the moon to blow it up. Obviously, people get stronger throughout time, so later late like way later in the in, in the series all the way until super obviously broly's much faster much stronger he can definitely do that but you can't use that fact that arbitrary fact from the non-canon movie because it doesn't some of them just don't simply don't apply right um they also used a list of his game like in-game abilities like uh, what were they called eraser canid like uh, there's a there's a there's a whole list i'll throw it up on the screen um of abilities that broly uses in in video games right so he's never the a lot of these abilities are, aren't actually named in the show and he might we might have seen him use, actually use some of these abilities before but a lot of them are just pure speculation on abilities that he can do because you need to fill up a skill set in a game rather than abilities that he actually showed in in game right so you you wanna you wanna try to stick to what's canon, what you've what you've seen, okay? Um, I guess for the most part, they're just trying to bring up the fact that he can throw throw beams out of his hand and whatever. Obviously, he can do most of the other things that the other Saiyans can do uh, with regards to attacks, just like in his own variations. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the list of names that they use not necessarily canon, but okay. Uh, let's let's move on. They also say a few weird things, right? Like, while other Saiyans get uh, stronger as they almost die, Broly's strength is tied to his emotions. That is true in the sense that he does get stronger when he's upset. But then, with that statement that they're implying that that replaces his Zenkai, that's not necessarily true. He still... Uh, He's a still a Saiyan, so he still has a Zenkai on top of that. Uh, it's not like that replaces a Zenkai. He still has a Zenkai, so if he were to lose a fight and, and get all, all, all beat up, he's going to get uh, much stronger from it. They also said he destroyed the South Galaxy. Did not happen in the show. That was just in the movie. Um, they also used some old models of the universe to uh, that were used in Z to kind of exemplify the the power scaling in in, in Super. Um, but in Super, we didn't even know there were multiple universes. So in Z, that model that they used, that was it. That was everything. But and then, but and then. But and then we were introduced to more universe, so we don't know if that's necessarily retconned or not, if we can still apply that or not. And using that model, I said that their universe was nine times larger than ours. I don't know exactly where they got that number from. Uh, they didn't really show any math for it. They just kind of showed the picture and said it's nine times greater than our universe. Don't know where that comes from, but that without any facts to back it up, it's wrong. And... And the last real issue I have with uh, with with the facts that they use is that they use some Super Saiyan uh, B and C types. I have no idea what's going on with these with with what they're saying with the B and C and A. I, I think it's their own way of saying uh, the different variations of Super Saiyans, but I don't know why they use the actual canon variations instead of saying A, B, and C, because I don't recall in the show there ever being an A, B, or a C type of, of, of Super Saiyan. Uh, there, there's usually the, the Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3, obviously full power Super Saiyan, uh, which is like more of a fan name. There's the legendary Super Saiyan transformation, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan... God Super Saiyan, which I guess you could say Super Saiyan Blue. So I don't really see where a class A, B, or C type is, but it, it, it seemed like they were talking about the Wrathful Saiyan, the, and then the Super Saiyan, the Legendary Super Saiyan. That one wasn't too bad. But those are the main issues that I had with them. The fight itself was pretty good. I feel like the fight itself was, was pretty accurate. Uh, I, I feel like it, they probably would have gone in similar ways, but they... Their, their facts were pretty, pretty wrong for some of these. So I just wanted to clear things up. Uh, if you guys like more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.